Self-help doesn't exist in a vacuum. Self-help doesn't exist in a silo where, you know, you have like these multiple choice questions. Like it exists in day-to-day -day life. My channel my name is Roshni and this channel is called Betty grew up and today I wanted to talk about why I'm not a life coach for women I was really thinking about being a life coach that was dedicated to working with women of color and that was kind of where my main passion was and a lot of that was because I spent a lot of time growing up in like white suburbs and at a really white college and I felt like there was just such a special bond between me and other women of color and most of my closest friends are still predominantly women of color. While I think that that is still important and my heart still really is there and I would always love to work with women of color and women in general, I realized that I didn't want to narrow down my target audience that much. And yes, that makes it a little bit more difficult, you know, in terms of just a business perspective, but there's a lot of reasons um, that kind of go behind this, and I wanted to just talk about that today. So one of them is that there is so much division already in the self-help and mental health kind of world and realm. You know, if you go online, you find tons of male speakers that have, you know, all-male audiences or that make videos for men or have, um, you know, all-male events or, you know, really talk to men in that kind of language that men respond to. And the same thing for women, you know, on Pinterest and online and in Facebook groups, you see Facebook groups for women, you know, marketing groups for women, all kinds of things that are based around, you know, business or self-help or personal growth or goal setting, but there's a lot of division between males and females in this realm. And there's already an existing aspect of that, that I wanted to kind of be a different voice that was a little bit more inclusive. And part of that is also the fact that, you know, there are genders outside of just being male or female. There's plenty of people that, that um, identify as non-binary, and I didn't want to feel exclusive in that sense either. You know, just because you're not male or female doesn't mean that we can't work together. It doesn't mean that I can't still help you or that you can't still learn from the content that I'm creating. But also, you know, at the end of the day, we all have a lot of the same struggles, and, you know, we are all looking for worthiness. We're looking to fulfill our roles in society. We're looking to, you know, be a good wife, a good mother, a good husband, and a good father, and all of these other, you know, different things that society expects from us and tells us to be. We do want to implement those things and be that for other people in our lives, and we want to be dependent, but at the core of all of those things, you're looking for your worthiness, right? You want to be worthy enough of being a good father. You want to be a father that is worthy of having, you know, amazing children. You want to be worthy of your spouse. In general, you want to feel like you're valued, but you get that feeling of self-esteem and self-worth from being valued in your day-to-day -day life and from being valued by the people that are around you and that you care about the most, right? And so even though society asks us to fulfill that in different ways, the core of what we're looking for is all the same. And that's why I focus so much on finding that self-worth and kind of finding your identity around that idea and separating it from your roles. You know, just because you had a, have a rocky relationship with your parents doesn't mean you're any less worthy. Just because you went through a divorce doesn't mean you're less worthy. Just because you don't want kids doesn't mean you're less worthy. So there's so many different things that kind of put us in these separate categories that make us feel like we're othered. The point is that we all want to be valued and we're all looking for this on a constant basis in society. And we are all different and yet we're all the same. We're all looking for these main core aspects to make us feel good about ourselves and make us feel like we have a place in society. But at the same time, just because there's a group of women together doesn't mean that their personality are all the same or that their strengths are all the same you know and it's the same thing for men they each individual has their own personality their own perspective their own life experiences and their own traumas that are making up their day-to-day -day choice choices and moods and you know their kind of emotional map you know and um it, it's something that we can all struggle with individually but at the same time our goals and kind of our end desires are pretty much the same, you know what I mean? So I feel like it's important to create a community where both men and women and 
non-binary folk as well can just get together and talk about, you know, what, and it's important to be able to come together and have that community where we can have these conversations. And that's my next point is that we still exist in a larger society, right? Like, yes, it's absolutely important for us to have that safe space with one another and for women to be able to talk to other women about what they're going through and for men to be able to relate to other men. And, you know, it's important that we have people that understand what we're going through in society. And I'm by no means saying that that has to vanish or that has to go away. I'm just saying that there is a space for both. And it's important to be able to have these, you know, safe spaces where we can feel like we are being understood on a societal level and our roles are being understood and we can kind of understand the pressures that each other faces. But at the same time, we can't address those pressures and we can't address those relationships if we're working on those things in a vacuum. And that's what my point is, is self-help doesn't exist in a vacuum. Self-help doesn't exist in a silo where, you know, you have like these multiple choice questions. Like it exists in day-to-day -day life. And that's when you realize how much you're growing and how much you're changing is, you know, these tiny little issues come up day to day and you can see how differently you respond to them and you can be patient and you know, be empathetic and think through those things. And so it's important to have a space where both men and women can talk with each other and have those conversations about, you know, the pressures that each other is facing, because sometimes we're just unaware. And if we're talking to other women about what we're going through, but not talking to your husband or your partner, or, you know, even your sons about the things that women face, then there's no hope for change. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to help if you're talking to your friends and your other women in your life about how stressful your husband is, but not talking to him about it. And even outside of just, you know, romantic relationships, even if you're not, you know, heterosexual, you still work with other genders in work, in play, in, you know, just in your day-to-day -day life. It's not like you're ever only going to be around one gender. And so you need to be able to understand how you can navigate that on kind of a higher plane, how you can be a better person in that arena. And if you're practicing being better as a friend to your other female friends or being better in your career, then you can see how it takes a little bit of practice and it takes a little bit of work to get there. And it's the same thing with, you know, having conversations with whoever your romantic partner is or with the other gender in your life because you need to start cultivating that practice and those relationships to be positive and to be empathetic. The thing is, I've also done a lot of research and looked into, you know, a lot of men's self-help and a lot of women's self-help. And obviously there's so much out there. There's no way I could ever, you know, cover it all. But a lot of the main themes really are the same. You know, they talk about gratitude. They talk about not making excuses. They talk about being motivated and setting yourself up for success and taking the small steps that you need to get there. They talk about consistency and patience. They talk about, you know, how to find balance between work life and family life and other hobbies and how to keep your identity. And there's so many themes that we think that we're living so, so separately. But I honestly think that there is so much more in common than we realize when it comes to what we're trying to balance and what society is like in 2019 and what we need to do to take care of ourselves and make sure that we're being the best people for the people around us. Like there's so much similarity there. You know, we can bond over self-care. We can bond over having hobbies. We can bond over creativity. We can bond over our desire to be better people and to help others. There's so much that is actually middle ground. And I don't think that constant separation is really the main way to get there. And again, by no means am I saying that we need to get rid of these safe spaces. I'm not saying that we need to banish any sort of like gender specific, you know, groups or anything like that. They definitely have their place, but I'm just saying that this community has its place as well. And, you know, the main difference that I've noticed is actually in self-help um, for men versus for women is really just the language, you know, a lot of language and visuals for men's self-help. It's more like just masculine and dynamic. You use like more just masculine words. And then, you know, for female self-help, it's like productive, inspiration, balance, like, you know, more kind of feminine inspired words, but we're getting to the same topics. Like we're talking about the same things just in different ways. And in that sense, it's just kind of like a marketing thing. It's like men's Kleenex or men's like butt wipes, you know, like when you walk down the aisle, you're like, this is the same stuff. It's just 
market it differently, you know, to kind of hit home a little bit more. And I do think that, again, that has its place. And, you know, sometimes we do need to hear things in that language and in that perspective. But the, the way forward really is to kind of come together and to talk about what we have in common and to share those experiences and to create more empathy for the other gender because there is a lot of effects that toxic masculinity leaves on men that's not right, but there's also obviously a lot of things that women have to deal with that they shouldn't have to in day-to-day -day society. And we can't fix these things just by talking to just by men talking to men and by women talking to women. We need to have more conversations that are inclusive and that have a, a you know, a big, that and that are di inclusive and that are diverse so that we can have these conversations that include intersectionality, that include all these different things that people face, including socioeconomic problems, geographic issues, sexism, like all these different things have a role and we can't, address them and really understand what other people are going through without those conversations. So that's why my channel isn't just for women and that's why my life coaching practice isn't just for women either. I really do want to focus on creating, you know, an online community where we have similar goals and we have similar desires, but we're all individuals and we're all different people and yet we're all achieving and looking forward to one common goal, which is finding our worth, finding our value, finding our role in this world, and finding, you know, how we can be the happiest and the most beneficial and the most in tune with society, how we can live our best lives and have the most impact on the others around us. That's what this community is about. It's not about just being a woman or just being gay or just being straight or just being a man. It's about so much more than that. And I want us to find that common humanity that we all share. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I will see you next week. Happy healing.